Hello and welcome to this Java interview coding challenge video where we don't just solve coding problems, we learn how to tackle them in an actual interview situation. Right? We learn how to solve those problems, we learn how, what to say, what to speak about those problems in an interview setting to maximize your chances of success. In this video, we're going to be tackling the power of four problem, lead code number 342. Power of four, but technically the approach can work for power of anything. Okay, check the power of a number. Given a number, here's a problem, right? Given a number, which is an integer, right? Sine 32 bit number, can you check? Can you write a function to check if it is a power of four? Can you multiply four enough times to get that number, right? Is it a power of four? Is there four to the power of some number which is going to give you the input number? Okay, so this is the problem statement. Let's look at some example cases. If the interviewer doesn't give you example cases, it's always a good thing to write some sample cases and say, okay, for these inputs, this is what the result should be. Right? It's good for any interview so that after you're done solving the problem, you can run those sample cases by your application, your code, and see if it's doing the right thing, right? So here are a couple of sample cases, right? Input is 16, the output should return true, right? Four times four, you get 16, so returns true. Input is five, it should return false, right? There's no four to the power of anything, any whole number, which is gonna give you five, so it returns false. This is the expected output, this is the expected result of your application. So how are you gonna solve this? How are we gonna write this in Java? Well, before uh, we look at the approach, uh, think of the corner cases. In this case, it's kind of like it's a mathematical problem, so you kind of know what the corner case is. So for example, if, if the input is zero, then the result is obviously false. If the input is one, the result is obviously false, so on, right? Um, so what's the approach? Well, there is, of course, the brute force approach, which is kind of like, it works. So basically what you do is you just take four, keep multiplying it until the result is greater than the input number, right? If it's less than the input number, you just keep going. If you, once you get it to greater, that means that you didn't hit the input number. So there's no multiple, there's no power of four that's gonna give you the input number. If you keep multiplying at some point, you do get the input number, well then you return true, right? The other way is of course dividing. You take the input number and then you keep dividing by four and uh, get look at the remainder, right? When the remainder is, is still divisible by four or if it's greater than four, you just keep dividing. If the remainder is not divisible by four, then you know that it doesn't, uh, you know, it's not, you, there's no point in, there's no way you can multiply something by four and get that number. So in that case also, you return false. The division is a little bit better. It's a little more optimal because you get the false case sooner, right? At some point of time, the remainder is not divisible by four. You know that you cannot, you know, it's not a valid number, not valid power of four. So you can just return false there. Whereas if you do multiply and keep multiplying, you won't know until your result is greater than the number. So division is is a little bit, little bit more optimal, even though the time complexity is kind of the same thing. So here's the approach. You divide the number, the input number by the base number, in this case, four. Okay, and check if the result is divisible by the base number. Can I still divide by four more times? Okay, if the result is not divisible, well then you cannot divide by four again, so you just return false, it's not a power of four. But if it is divisible by four, just keep repeating, right? Keep dividing by four, look at the remainder if it's a multiple of four, keep doing that until you uh, you come up with the, the end condition. Let's look at the end condition when you're looking at the code, all right? So here is my method, this power of four, which takes in an integer n and it returns a boolean. Is this a power of four or no? What am I doing here? If n equals zero, I just return false. If while n is not equal to one, okay, while I don't have n equals one, I am going to look at this remainder dividing by four, okay? So this is the modulo. I'm gonna check if n modulo four equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, well, I'm going to return false, right? At any point of time, if what I'm left with is not divisible by four, I just return false. Otherwise, I just keep dividing by four, okay? So just keep doing this. And then in the end, end condition, I return true. It means it went through the whole thing and it has to be equal to one at this point when it comes over here. That means that I have successfully divided by four so that the remainder is, well, the, div the, the quotient is one. So it has become a 
proper division, right? So this last point, n was four, and then I divided by four, and now n is one, and that's when it quits, and then it returns true. Of course, I could also have put four over here, and it would work just as well. It would have just returned, uh, it would have saved one loop over here. But this is my application, okay? This will work. And um, time complexity is, uh, I would say, log of n, because you're basically dividing constantly, so you have uh, log of n time complexity. So this will work, and then most of the times when you're asked this in like an application developer role, you can, you can say, yeah, this is good enough. But then you can make it a little more optimal if you know a certain property of logs and exponents, okay? Logs and exponents have a relationship with each other. One is a, almost like an inverse of another, okay? Log is an inverse of exponent, okay? Just like plus and minus are inverses, you know, multiplication and division are inverses, log and exponents are inverses, okay? So that's how you can do better by looking at that relationship and kind of leveraging that relationship. So here is what that relationship looks like, okay? Log of x to the base b equals y basically means b to the power of y equals x, right? They're inverses of each other, okay? So in our particular case, what we wanna do is we wanna check for power of four, okay? Four to the power of x equals my input. Is there a whole number x? that I can raise four to the power of to get my input, okay? So this basically means I need to inverse this thing. So it basically means log of input to the base four will give x, okay? So what I need to do is I need to just calculate this, log of input to the base four and see if this results in a whole number. Okay, that's all I need to do. If I do this, well then I can figure out if input is, you know, four to the power of something, okay? So how do I get log of input to the base four? Well, there is, this, there is a way for that as well. Now you can, you have to use another mathematical property, which is log of x to the base y is equal to log x divided by log y. Okay, so what I need to do here is, I just need to do log of input divided by log of four, right? This is what I need to do and check if that's a whole number. If that's a whole number, well then uh, input is something that you can, uh, you can get by multiplying four enough times, okay? It's very arithmetic, but basically what you need to do is log of input divided by log of four. And this is, this is why you need to do it, okay? It's just mathematical. Again, it's not typical that an interviewer would expect you to know this much of math in an application developer role, okay? Let's say you're building web applications. You don't typically need to know this kind of, uh, these kind of mathematical concepts. If you're doing more of systems programming, then you might probably might uh, need to know this, but for application development, you don't need to know this. But if you do this, if you can solve this, it's, you're gonna nail this interview, right? So this is, this is the actual uh, solution, okay? I'm basically doing log of the number divided by log of four, okay? Just look at this. Look at, look at this highlighted thing. What am I doing here? Log of the input divided by log of four. This is basically log of the input to base four, okay? I'm checking if that is a whole number. Well, how do I check if something is a whole number? Well, I divide by one and see what the remainder is. If the remainder is something, that means that it's not a whole number. There's a decimal point there. But if I'm dividing by one and the remainder is zero, that means that what I'm dividing by one is a whole number, right? So modulo one equals zero, basically checks if a given number is a whole number or not, okay? So I'm checking if log of number to base four, which is basically log of number divided by log of four, log of number to base four, is that a whole number? If that's a whole, the whole number, that means that that number, four to the power of that number, is gonna give you the input. Okay, that's the inverse relationship. So this is the this is the final solution. You do this, it's a simple way without loops to make this work. Okay, so the lead code problem had the had a kind of like a, a, a sub statement, an extra challenge, which is well solve this problem, but see if you can do this without loops. Well, this is how you do it without loops, applying this mathematical concept. Okay, so the time complexity here is again, well, is it of one because you don't have loops here? Well, it really depends on how 
the internal log uh, algorithm is calculated. I have no idea, okay? So at least you can tell that your logic is constant time. It all depends on what the logarithmic calculation is. If anybody knows what the time complexity of math.log is, please let me know uh, in the comments. But I'm gonna say, well, if I were asked this in an entry, I would say, well, it really depends on what the time complexity of math.log is. I haven't looked at the code, so I do not know but I would imagine it would be something like log of n. I don't know, I'm just guessing here. I don't know. Again, if you know, let me know in the comments. But this is your solution to this problem. If you're ever asked in an interview, how do you detect if something like four to the power of something gives you the number or anything? Find out if it is a power of some number. Well, this is how you do it. And if you do this, you're gonna nail this interview, right? So this is, um, uh, another interview coding challenge. Do check out the playlist for more of these and thanks for watching.